Alright, this is my little film on doing some clone painting in post-workshop. Load your image. Then switch to bitmap editor. The brush settings dialog box will come up. There's three groups of brushes. To access them, you click on it, and there's different lines which you can go down. I'm not going to go through all that right now. The brush I want to use is Paintbrush 01 in the brush family over here. To pick a brush, you click on it and you'll see the box around it. And once you have it selected, you close this. Now we have the basic brush settings, the size. You want to make it larger at first. You check it against the photo. Every photo will be different depending on how large and what the resolution is. The opacity you want all the way to the right. That's full opacity. And the roundness you can leave it here or you can move it up. Makes the brush more round. I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, brush angle. I usually use either mouse path or auto angle. The auto angle will rotate more than the mouse path. Manual will rotate the least. Uh, right now, my tablet is giving me troubles, so I'll be painting this with the mouse. Um, brush dynamics, we have spacing, size jitter, angle jitter. That will make the, the brush jump more if you do those. Again, all these controls, feel free to experiment. I'm not going to really go through them. This is just to give you a quick idea of your basic settings. I kicked the hue up a little bit. That will add colors in as it goes along. You can also kick these up. I wouldn't really go much past 10 on any of them. Alright, now to clone. To clone from a photo, you want to click on Clone Continuous. And you want to choose Reference Image so it clones from the photo. Now the Guide Opacity, you can... Whatever... I like Outlines. And down here, Canvas. It'll show you the original image. Or colored, in which case it'll pick up the background color. I wouldn't use that. I work with transparent. Makes a little sketch so you can see where to follow your outlines. But this sketch will not be part of the painting, so don't worry about it. And then tablet properties, I don't uh, do anything. I leave it at all. Now, you just put your pen to your tablet and you manually start to paint. Now, normally if I was painting with um, the stylus this would be rotating a lot a lot more but I'm painting with the mouse because I'm having some problems and I do not have time to fix them and try to get this demonstration done as well and you just paint all over So you get a nice muck up going. The whole key to this program is to keep changing your brush size until you're getting the effects that you want in the different areas. And you're not going to break anything, you know. If it doesn't, don't, doesn't look right, change it and try something else. It's like all these painting programs, you have to find brushes that work for you. And just like all these programs, wherever you're clicking on the source from, it'll pick up the colors that are there. And once you've got them mucked up, and I'm not going to paint this whole thing because it would take way too long. This is just to show you what controls to use, basically. You take your brush down. Maybe not that much. 
and you paint again. And you just keep doing this until you like the way it's looking. Once you like the way an area looks, leave it. And the smaller you go, you'll be bringing the details in. Normally I would zoom in, which would be, you would click this arrow here, it says zoom, and go in closer, but I've been having a problem. And then after you zoom, you would have to click back on this brush back up here, so you can get back to painting. I'm not going to zoom because it's been hanging up and uh, this is about the third time I've tried to uh, film this so I'm just gonna and then you know you go down even smaller when you want to like really pull in the eyes and things like that glasses As I remind you, I am painting with the mouse, so this is why it's not coming in that great. And like I said, you just keep working until you get your details. definitely helps when you zoom in, but I'm not going to... in there, done that before, for now. I'm not losing another film. Uh, the hair I would do bigger. And then when you get it looking more like you want it, here's a trick I figured out, because I don't really care for any of the um, blending brushes. Now I just take the opacity of the brush I'm painting with down to about 10. That will bring a little bit of color, but what it'll do is it helps you to blend. Let me get the size up a little bit so you can see. And then you just kind of ride the areas between different blocks of color to smooth them out and blend them in. And there's not a lot of facial area on this fella, so it's not going to get too smooth looking. And he's a guy, you can, you can leave him a little more wiry looking. But believe me, it does, it does work. And it is bringing in a little bit of color, because it's, it's still on 10. So, you can just keep working that like that, and it'll, it'll eventually blend it in. And you probably won't finish it all up in, in uh, EWS. Uh, my suggestion there is to, um, you know, once you get it looking really pretty good here, uh, save it and take it into Painter. Set the original photo as your clone source. And uh, use the Dens brushes especially the Dens um, Messy. That kind of suits this pretty pretty good. This brush goes along with it pretty good. And you can do some more blending and bring the details back in that. Um, I go back into compositing to save it. I don't know if you have to, but I do that. and make sure you've got your right file type and make sure you render full size when you save it 